Yo, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now turning into uh, to another issue regarding the United States of America and Nigeria. A year ago, in January 2020, Trump extended curbs on immigration to include six more countries, and that was including Nigeria. At the time, the U.S. government said the policy was designed to tighten security for countries that they said didn't comply with the U.S., minimum security standards or cooperate to prevent illegal migration. But the uh, newly inaugurated Biden administration is seeking to reopen America to the world and has canceled the travel ban on Nigeria and other countries. Femi Lawson now joins us to discuss this. Good morning. Good morning. This is uh, good news for Nigeria, isn't it? It is. It is a good news for Nigeria and some of those other countries that... Uh, of course, were summarily placed on this ban by the Trump administration. And you realize that one of the major you know, policy focus of the Biden administration, as reflected in its campaign, was the need to <coughs> reverse some of these uh, arbitrary sort of decisions taken by the Trump administration, many of whom you know, were true executive orders. So I think it's a welcome thing. All right. Um, one of the things that was mentioned um, in that report, and it, it says uh, that the laws by Donald Trump were designed to tighten security for countries that don't comply with U.S. minimum standards or cooperate to prevent illegal migration. So let's talk about that. Um, do you think that Nigeria has done better in that regard? Um, or are we just lucky to you know, be added to the list that you know, can now... No, I well, I think uh, the country, Nigeria, has been doing its best to work with the United States you know, to, on the issue of illegal migration, not only as a joint in doing that. A lot of other countries have also tightened up after the ban by the Trump administration. And I think uh, the decision, even though it was a hard one, was taken in a manner that uh, was shocking, not only to Nigeria, but other countries that were placed on that ban, some even for you know, <laughs> religious extremism purposes. And uh, I think uh, now it is not even a moment of celebration for these countries. I know the United States must have reviewed some of the compliance level of these countries before the decision taken by the Trump administration. And I think it is not also enough for these countries to relax, including Nigeria you know, about those issues that were raised by the Trump administration, you know, in, by the virtue of the fact that this new administration in the United States have lifted the, the ban. So I think it's a, it's a call for more responsibility, just like the countries have been able to do in the last 12 months, you know, to address those areas raised, you know, as a basis that the Trump administration will place this ban on the categories of people. Yeah, but, 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 but I want you to go on with, you know, talking. The, the reason the Trump administration took those steps, do you agree that they had genuine re concerns and reasons, you know, for, those, for taking those steps in the first place? Because when, when you well, come the, and the, you... The first priority of any government must be the security, you know, of its citizens. If the, the decision of the Trump administration was premised, you know, on the national security of the, of the United States. And any serious administration must do that. And it is not even enough for us to assume that such sanctions may not even come up again under the new administration in the United States. It has to do with the readiness of these countries, including Nigeria, to comply and abide you know, by these issues that have been raised you know, by the previous administration, or what may be raised by the new administration in the United States, because it has to do with the national security of the United States. And like you know, the United States does not joke with its national security. And that is one thing we must always be conscious of. All right, that, that leads me to my next question. I mean, the United States, when Trump, you know, you first, you know, issued this ban on Nigeria and other countries, they said, quote, that Nigeria was not complying with established identity management and information sharing criteria, and that the country was failing to provide, you know, information for public safety. You know, just like you said, that America uh, was his the first response was basically to protect their country. 
But we see that this was condemned all through the U.S. as a racist policy, you know, for Trump's own end. But really, though, do you think this was justified? Do you think this was Trump being racist at the time, simply trying to marginalize immigrants? Or if it really was about security, like, like, like he mentioned? Well, of course, the Trump administration had a very strong stance as far as the issue of immigration is concerned in America, not against Africans alone, even against neighboring American states. And you all recall that that was in the first time in the United States that an administration has started putting up walls, you know, between the United States and Mexico, you know, built even a lot of invisible walls, you know, between the United States and so many other countries. It uh, was part of those policies that uh, were condemnable under the Trump administration. Some considered it as uh, racist, and uh, but Trump, as a person or the administration, was always placing this on the table of you know, the need for the protection of the United States national security. And for the average American citizen, they seek you know, protection before any other thing. For the average American citizen, it is about the national security. And uh, that is why you know, we may not totally say this was just for the purpose of racial discrimination. But right. I think the, uh, the administration then would have done better by engaging, you know, in a way that would have made more, you know, reasoning these countries that were listed, uh, that were, you know, even do you really recall that the foreign ministry had to raise, you know, issues about the fact that, you know, the, the decision came in a summary manner that, you know, countries were not prepared or were not engaged in that decision. So I think uh, that is one shortcoming on the part of the Trump administration. But I don't think it is out of place for countries not only the United States, there are countries in Europe that have also taken similar steps in the past to you know, re, you know, moderate you know, immigration issues, to oppose, streamline immigration you know, issues as far as entering and into the countries are concerned because of the times we live in, you know, we are in a time where there are serious issues of global security. Today, mm. Nigeria is listed as one of the most stable most of stable countries when you look at the activities of ISWAP, you know, ISIS, the Boko Haram. So the United States have every reason to be interested, you know, in the you know, the, the commitment of the country towards you know regulating in its immigration policies. And that is why some of us were not surprised mm. that Nigeria was listed on that uh, list of countries that were you know restricted from certain categories of visa. All but right. I think it should be an opportunity for us now to address some of these issues that were raised by the Trump administration, not only, not by entirely viewing it, you know, as a racial decision okay. or as an arbitrary decision by the Trump administration. Okay, first of all, I want to apologize to our viewer for the dog. Is the dog I can okay? Hear the dog. <laughs> uh, Mr. I can hear the dog barking. I want to say we're sorry about Mr. that. Lawson. Kindly bear with us. All right, so let's address the craze for Nigerians to escape Nigeria. What do you think are some of these attractions that you know are making Nigerians, so many of them want to leave the country in droves to seek greener pastures elsewhere? And how can we ensure that the government put this infrastructure in place to make Nigerians more comfortable at home? As we speak this morning, if you go through virtually all the foreign missions of various countries in this country. You find the queue of Nigerians in their own bread, waiting outside you know, to secure visa, not only to the United States, not only to the United Kingdom, but even countries in Asia and Africa. Our people are all over out there seeking visa just to get out of this country. And it's a sad reflection of the economic situation of this country, not only the economic situation as it used to be now, but even the the state of our national security. The average family today seek, you know, to relocate from this country because of the degeneracy, you know, in the security situ the situation of this country. It's quite sad that uh, people do not do no longer see hope of for a, a prosperous society. Our young people are not seeing hope of a future that guarantees, you know, what they aspire to become. And that is why you see the the, the rush, the rush 
for, for, for leaving this country, the rush for securing visa to any country. Some, some people, when you interview them, they tell you they just want to go to any country. Not minding how poor the situation. Everyone now believes, especially the young people, that their own country is perhaps one of the worst places for them to stay on are very quite unfortunate. But in moving forward, we must not just see this as, as a test by our people, particularly young people to travel. It is not just a test to emigrate from Nigeria. It's, it, it's, 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 it calls for a serious national reflection for, on our part as a country to address those issues that have made the country so insecure, so you know, uncomfortable for our people to live any longer. We must look at the issue of unemployment that has skyrocketed you know, in a proportion that is unprecedented. We must look at the issue of our national security that has made it very difficult for families to now become comfortable to stay in their own homes. Until we begin to do this, more and more of our people will, be, will continue to seek not only greener pastures, but also to begin to seek safety and security outside the shores of Nigeria. It is very sad, but I think it is a call for our government and stakeholders to begin to address those issues that have turned the embassies in Nigeria to markets where our people are seeking to get out at every given opportunity. A lot of our young people have lost hope. A lot of our young people celebrate living in Nigeria like, you know, like, like more than winning lottery. It is quite sad and I think it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's a thing that should really you know, awaken the consciousness of the Nigerian government to the need to declare a national emergency on unemployment, to declare a national emergency on a national security and begin to address these core issues that have made Nigeria so uncomfortable for Nigerians to live any longer. Yeah, there's also, uh, of course, I guess you know, we would agree it's also responsible for the brain drain uh, that uh, you know, you know, people have predicted will continue to happen in Nigeria. Um, uh, Nigeria is losing a lot of doctors to Canada and the UK and Saudi Arabia, um, and that doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. Um, I, I, I want you know to also just before we go speak on the idea of changing. A new government coming into power and then reversing policies. If you remember, Donald Trump did the same thing when he got into power, you know, reversing a lot of, um, or trying to reverse Barack Obama's policies. Um, about the same thing is, seems to be happening now. Uh, would you say, and of course you, you will also bear in mind the climate change agreement, the exit from the World Health change. Organization and the likes, uh, would you say that Joe Biden is doing this uh, as a vindictive, you know, um, you know, a, a way, a path that he's taking, or strategic? You know, has he seen that you know the United States will benefit better if these policies were reversed, or is it same with what Donald Trump was accused of doing uh, with Barack Obama's policies? It's not unusual, most especially in multi-party democracies, when you look at history. You know, not only in the United States, even in other countries where there are multi-party democracies, but political parties tend to come into government, you know, to implement policies that are intended with the manifestos of their party. Each of these political parties have their approach to governance, they have their approach to issues of foreign policy, they have their approach even to issues of domestic you know, affairs. And that is what is reflected in some of the decisions that have been taken by the new political party, you know, the Democrats that have taken over governance in, uh, in, in the United States. If you look at that party as it's constituted, the, the policies of the Democrats are often traditionally, you know, different from the policies of the Republican as a party whenever they're in government. And in this case, it becomes more, you know, visible because even the immediate past president of the United States was a president who ran the country more or less, you know, like a, a personal estate, more than, more than what ordinarily used to be the manifest manifestos of his party. And that is why you have not only a lot of opposition to his re-election from the opposing political parties, but even from within his own political parties to the point of having, in an unprecedented man manner, members of his own political party voting for his impeachment during the second impeachment proceeding. So these are issues ordinarily that has to do with manifestos of political party 
And in some cases, especially in our own part, people come and some administration tend to be vindictive in their approach to governance by coming in and erasing you know, policies of their predecessors, no matter how laudable or how beautiful they had. That, in most cases, have been politics taken too far because in, sometimes we realize that politicians don't act in the interest of the people they claim to come to govern, but rather in, in, in their own personal interest. But in the case of the United States, I think most of the decisions that have been taken by the Biden administration is in tandem with the policies of the Democrat, the Democratic Party. If you look at their history, if you look at their foreign policy program, their policy programs, their domestic policy programs, they are very much relevant to decisions that have been taken by the uh, Biden administration, which okay. were opposed you know, to some of those policies of the Trump administration, a man who you know, virtually operated like an independent uh, person without giving so much you know, recourse to the right, feelings so and even the manifestos of his own political party. All right. um, we're out of time. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lawson. You're speaking Thank with you. us from Lagos, right? Yes, yes. Okay, if you were in a part of the country, I would have been sure what's going on with the dog uh, this morning, but uh, I think the dog is safe. Uh, thank thank you. you very much for your time. Thank you for speaking with us, and uh, we'll talk so again. Good. Oh my uh, God, Osari, that was so funny. But anyway. So all going down this morning. <laughs> See, talking about this travel ban issue and how Nigerians just want to go abroad, I don't know if you saw the story that broke the news yesterday. Thailand Immigration Police just arrested a man in Thailand, yeah. a Nigerian man. He overstayed his 60-day tourist visa for seven years. Maybe he overslept. For seven years. <sighs> oh, my God. I just, I just hope that, you know, that we, the government fixes the country so that... Maybe it was waiting for his wife to put on her makeup. And she, 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 so so that when people even offer you, you know, an opportunity to go abroad, you're like, no, I'm comfortable here. I have my business. You know, government policies favor me. I am good. My kids are in great public schools here. Everything is working. I would rather just come, you know, to say hello to you, but I'm comfortable in Nigeria. Well, I just hope that we oh, as a people can while. get to that stage, you know, as a country, not as a people. country, we, you know, Nigeria needs to get there. Anyway, um, that's uh, what we have for now. We're taking a short break. When we come back, as always, still on the breakfast, uh, we will be talking about uh, education. Education. Yes, um, there seem to be giant strides. The government seems to have accomplished, you know, some remarkable feats in the field of education and what they're doing about reducing our out-of-school children population. Uh, we'll discuss that with an educationist after the break. <laughs>